area is San Onofre and Diablo Canyon nuclear power plants. The Bay Area is the sort of round one with the Livermore Lab, the secret Navy, U.S. Navy uh, radioactive research facility in Hunters Point Naval Shipyard. The whole black community is dying of radiation-related illnesses, and the mortician uh, for um, uh, San Francisco County coroner for San Francisco County stated that every person he did a uh, an autopsy on in San Francisco County who was from Hunters Point had cancer in their bodies no matter what the cause of death was. I'm showing this to you just to demonstrate that nuclear power plants and nuclear reactors have a devastating effect on public health. And what's coming out of Fukushima today and tomorrow and the day after has caused death all over the United States. This is uh, data from Japan. It's the main causes of death since 1898. This is the most complete health statistics that I've found in the world. I have the complete health statistics in one volume for $140 from the Japanese government. And they did it meticulously and in great detail. The problem is it's just big piles of numbers, just like when you go the, to the centers of disease site. You have to know how to graph them. Well, this actually was graphed in the, in the journal, but you can see that up until the 1950s, the main causes of death in Japan were from infectious diseases. And cancer, which is that green line, was very, very low, and so was diabetes. There is a blank space, 1945 to 1947, when the US government would not allow the Japanese to report their vital statistics. It was to hide the effects of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And then with the introduction of each new nuclear technology, mortality from radiation-related illnesses replaced the deaths from infectious diseases. And you can see that that top hump uh, is cardiovascular I'm sorry, cerebrovascular diseases, brain diseases, mortality. And cancer went up, uh, and also underneath cancer is heart disease. And look at the big increase after 1990 with the introduction of depleted uranium to the battlefield. I got the annual reports off of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power website and I plotted the uranium levels in drinking water in Los Angeles since 1999. And you can see all the battles, Najaf, al Sadr, Basra, uh, 2003 Iraq War, Tora Bora bombing. It's all in the drinking water of Los Angeles. Hor uranium in drinking water or in rivers or whatever is causing hormone and estrogen effects and in Los Angeles, the little boys are disappearing from the schoolrooms because the XY chromosome, which is a boy, and the XX chromosome, which is a girl, the XX is much stronger. And so the XY is weaker, and more of the baby boy fetuses die, or embryos die, than female. And the estrogen and hormone defects uh, effects are also causing an expanding female population, a shrink shrinking male population in, for instance, the salmon in the Columbia River because of radiation from Hanford and the Trojan reactor. So what we're doing is turning humans and animals into hermaphrodites, mixing sex sexual reproductive cells. And uh, you can see in fish, reproductive tissues, there are defective or irregular sperm-producing cells right 
next to and, and integrated in the ova, the female egg. What are those doing in male fish? They shouldn't be there. The polar bears in the Arctic exposed to those bomb tests and the radiation from Iraq, Afghanistan, and Yugoslavia carried up to the Arctic within a couple of days. The female polar bears have cubs, but they also have penises. And so this is happening in our babies, too. And what a terrible decision for a parent to have a newborn and have to decide what to remove in surgery or whether to wait until the child is old enough to choose which sex they want to be. What a dilemma. What are we doing to humanity? What are we doing to life on Earth? This is complete insanity. This is uh, from the New York Times. These are maps of diabetes. The top map is New York City. Everybody's drinking the same drinking water. The darkest areas on the top is Harlem, where the African Americans predominate in the community. And then Bronx, the Bronx, and is it Queens? I don't know New York City very well. But two other areas where minorities and poor live. Why do they have much higher rates of diabetes than the rest of the affluent part of New York City? The answer is that we discovered after Chernobyl that the state milk boards are taking the most contaminated radioactive milk from dairies near nuclear power plants and they're shipping that into black inner city communities where it's sold in the mom and pop stores. Look at Africa in the bottom map. It has the lowest diabetes in the world. So how can diabetes be genetic in blacks if they didn't have it in Africa? It's because U.S. national policy is to genocide the black communities with radiation. Healing and treating disease. Um, there are certain plants that have a certain vibrational energy, and it's from the photons coming from the sun that re oh. uh, Not only chemical pharmaceuticals are a way to treat disease, but I think that uh, I've worked a lot with Native Americans and shamans and healers, and the work they're doing is really phenomenal. Uh, I've sent people to a woman, medicine woman, in, on Vancouver Island, and she has cured diabetes. I went all over the world and asked tribes, many tribes and indigenous people, what medicine do you use to cure diabetes? Every population, indigenous population I asked, had a plant or a fruit or an herb or a root bark that would do that. And there's no reason for us to be taking insulin when you can get root bark off of Devil's Club, which grows in British Columbia in the woods, make a tea out of it every morning, and you have no diabetes. And she can even cure it. I've sent people to her, and she did. So we have all the medicine we need to cure many illnesses that we have right out there in the woods right out there in the orchard. It's being forgotten, or it's being uh, buried, or it's being legislated out of existence so that people with vested interests in pharmaceutical companies, and they're usually the ones who are the decision makers on what weapons to use that cause widespread illnesses. Um, so for instance, deple depleted uranium, the Carlisle Group and George Herbert Walker Bush, who started it, uh, made the few, her first huge amounts of money on depleted uranium weapons, which George Herbert Walker Bush introduced in Gulf War I. And then um, it continued in, to be used in larger and larger amounts, and it's all over the world now. It's been measured in the atmosphere in England seven to nine days 
after they use it in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's in LA drinking water a, a week or two after they use it in Afghanistan and Iraq. So um, if it's in LA drinking water in British atmosphere, it means it's global. It's absolutely everywhere. And we don't even know it. We don't even taste it. We're, we're, it's not even reported to us by our own radiation monitoring agencies. So we really need to, um, to read more. And all I'm doing today is giving you a framework for a puzzle. And now that you have that framework, there are many pieces that you have already, but you have no way to relate compartmentalized information. Now that you've got a Velcro patch on your brain, which I put on today, you will begin to collect information, but you have a framework to put it in, and it really becomes more exciting and interesting as you read and share it with other people, and they tell each other stories, and you create your own database of information that you collected yourself that you can trust and you can share with others. So please, please talk to everyone you know and share this information because it's only a global awareness. All these small lights going on all over the world sharing information that will save us and help us and also make us realize it's not personal. It depersonalizes the pain and the fright and the suffering and it empowers us to speak out, to act in a positive way and to help each other. No country, no government, no region, no state, no city, no family can afford nuclear power anymore. This is what the aftermath of Fukushima looks like in one of the reactors. And that was taken on March 11th. How in the world could they send all those kamikaze workers to a fate of death to try to get something this destroyed to work. And now, with the Stuxnet virus, it means in any country with nuclear power, this can happen with a pen drive. And this is what the hidden agenda of nuclear power is really about. It's for economic warfare. It's for land grabs. It's for depopulation. How could you not see it now? It's so obvious. I'm not going to be silent and let GE poison the whole world and destroy humanity. And I hope you will help me by telling other people, by sharing the information, and by finding the strength and the spirituality within you to fight back. Because we're all being poisoned to death. Thank you. showing this to you just to demonstrate that nuclear power plants and nuclear reactors have a devastating effect on public health. And what's coming out of Fukushima today and tomorrow and the day after has caused death all over the United States. This is uh, data from Japan. It's the main causes of death since 1898. This is the most complete health 
statistics that I've found in the world. I have the complete health statistics in one volume for $140 from the Japanese government. And they did it meticulously and in great detail. The problem is it's just big piles of numbers, just like when you go the, to the Centers of Disease site, you have to know how to graph them. Well, this actually was graphed in the, in the journal. Area is San Onofre and Diablo Canyon nuclear power plants. The Bay Area is the sort of round one with the Livermore Lab, the secret Navy, U.S. Navy uh, radioactive research facility in Hunters Point Naval Shipyard. The whole black community is dying of radiation-related illnesses. And the mortician uh, for um, uh, San Francisco County, coroner for San Francisco County stated that every person he did a uh, an autopsy on in San Francisco County who was from Hunters Point had cancer in their bodies no matter what the cause of death was.